My name is Musa Adnan, that's Michael Dawood, aka Dawi. This is Rerooted, and here's what we have coming up today. I'd never been so low as when I was high. SubhanAllah. You know what I mean? Deep. I've never been so low as when I was high. Deep. You know? I've been there. I'm not to say that, you know, but I know from experience, when I was in that world, everybody was the same. If you're happy, bro, you don't need to drink. My dad was, um, before my dad became Muslim, he'd say, right, he'd go, what's this religion, son? What, I mean, what, what, what are you doing with this thing, you know? So I goes, dad, you know, the problem with this religion is, is that it makes you respect your parents. It makes you give charity. It stops you from drinking. It stops you from taking drugs. It stops you from going out there and having girlfriends. That's the problem with it. So have you spoken to like white people like these like some of these guys who are builders or like what just Bro, general I've spoken white to the mm -hmm. most racist right wing EDL extremists that you could find if you if you went out looking for them. Salam alaikum bro. Alaikum salam. How's right. things? I'm good bro. How are you? Alhamdulillah, really really good. Good. Welcome to the podcast. Thank you. I think it's going to be a very very interesting one mashallah. Yeah. So uh Dawi, yes. uh, as you're known by mashallah tabarakallah from Luton, yes. Please tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay, um, I'm a revert now for what, say, 23 years or something like that. So um, I count the Ramadans that I've been Muslim. So yeah. I don't remember the exact day. No one yeah. does, I suppose, today. So yeah, about 23 years. I've uh, I'm just an ordinary white working class guy. Grew up okay. on a council estate. Still live on a council estate. Still work a building site job. I'm a plasterer. Nice. My, my, my trade is plastering. So. There's, there's nothing unique about me. I'm Mr. Normal, as well, it were. I think everything you mentioned is unique. Ooh, about a plasterer. Yourself. There's loads a of plaster, there's A builder, loads of that's a Muslim. Oh, is it? Right. I mean, That's unique for a Muslim? I mean, for a white Muslim. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm definitely the only white plasterer that I know. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, so that might be unique. But as a person, I'm not unique, in it? There's many of people like me. Yeah, mashallah, yeah. tabarakallah. So, the way I actually came across you, um, yeah. as you know, yeah. is I saw a video of yeah. you and you were, mashallah, speaking very, very passionately about um, the community and you were speaking uh, with regards to dawah, actually. Yeah. And how dawah is needed mm -hmm. and how there's a lack of dawah towards white people in general, right? I, I believe so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I do, yeah. So, I mean, we live in a, in a, in a, in a, in a, in a <coughs> country, Britain, that is... Ethnically speaking, a white country. Uh, yeah, predominantly white people are the majority of the population. Yeah, so, so from that, that sense, it's white. If you go outside of London and yeah. main main areas, kind of thing, yeah. um, in the towns and stuff like that, you'll find it's very white population. Uh, yeah, yeah, and you can go outside of the towns and the cities, but it's all white. Yeah, and people that hold power are probably all white. We might have a few token brown lads in there, but power comes from white <laughs> people in this country. Yeah, and in the world, generally speaking. But yeah. I mean, you know. So how do you feel? As a as a white Muslim now, um, who's been a Muslim for twenty three yeah, years, yeah, how do you feel with regards to how dawah is in the twenty first century? I th I, it's, it's definitely come along because uh, like twenty three years ago, nobody gave me dawah. You know, I I, I didn't uh, approach. I did approach Muslims, but nobody actually went out specifically to come and give me dawah, even though I invited them to. Yeah, you know, I, I was I was looking for um for a god. Okay, so when I, before I become a, a Muslim. I uh, I used to go and pray on a hill where I live, like a, a mound. They used to have a children's park on it, but they knocked it down. So I would go and pray there, and I would always look up and pray. And I, I didn't know anything about Islam then. I didn't know anything about Christianity, to be true. I mean, in my house, although we were supposedly Christian, we'd go to church if you was getting married or, or getting buried. And <laughs> that's the time we went to church. Yeah. There was no church for us, you know what yeah. I'm saying? So not Christian in a sense, but we would go there as a, as a, as a traditional burial traditional marriage hmm. so I would go there and pray and I, I, I made a prayer um, that I would go out and find God I'd look for him he wouldn't have to look for me hmm. so then I obviously I went around I, I spoke to some Hindu friends of mine I had a couple of Hindu lads that I knew I spoke to some I knew, I knew some uh, evangelists or you know like the the, Pentecost, the singing churches hmm. were very good friends of mine I went to ask them I, I went to ask I didn't know any Jewish people I would have asked them but they just don't live where, in Luton where I live because hmm. it's too poor they live in more affluent neighborhoods so i asked different people mm. and um and i was asking muslims but i wasn't getting any response okay I, you know I, I was going to jehovah's witnesses and they would talk your ears off i would go to the you know everyone would have a go at talking even though i wasn't going to their scholars i was still going to who i thought would be able to tell me about it 
and I was asking the Muslims that I did know, yeah. why don't you come and come around my flat at the time I was living in? Come around my flat and talk to me, and they, and they wouldn't they wouldn't talk. You know, they just shy to do it. So it's like you were asking Muslims to no, give I you dawah. <laughs> telling the three times they went to come around my flat and have a cup of tea with me and sit down and 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 talk to me. So three times we made an appointment, <laughs> and th and three times they never come. And then, so that in the end, I said, look, I'm going to come to your mosque because I've read a leaflet somewhere that says that Jesus weren't crucified. And I've seen the films, mate. You know what I mean? He's been crucified because he's been on the telly. You must understand that white people have seen films of Jesus being white, blonde hair, blue eyed for since they were kids and being yeah. crucified. You tell them any different to that, it's like, oh, wow. You know, that medium of showing them a white Christian that's crucified is like standard. Mm. So I just wanted to go to the mosque in yeah. order to ask the, the Muslims, what's, what's your story about this? Hmm. What's your story? I don't know. You know, tell me about this side of it because that's interesting to me. Okay, because yeah, yeah, yeah. as a kid, I was always interested in history. Hmm. You know, which made me interested in, I suppose, religion. Because when you read the Bible or, or the Quran, it's a it's a history book, isn't it? Hmm. Uh, they, they cover a lot of history. a lot of history in it as well. So that always interested me. So yeah, I, I went there. I went to the mosque in East London at that that that, that time, and I sat down with a this guy was Arab. Hmm. So it was a mosque full of Pakistanis and Bangladeshis, but, and about four or five Arabs, and it was an Arab that sat me down and. And I ended up taking my shahada that night. Wow. And that was okay. in Ramadan. What I find inspirational about your story, which I didn't know about mm. um, until now, is subhanAllah, I think that it's it's very in line with what we're doing at Aira. Right. From the sense where we're trying to encourage people to mm. go out there, give da'wah, speak to people, yeah. invite people to Islam, right? Invite to the way of your Lord yeah. with hikmah, with wisdom, mm. uh, as the Quran tells us to do. And it's, it's, uh, it's in Arabic, there's something known as a fi'l amr. Which is a command. It's a command verb mm. that you you should do this. You have to do this. Go and do this, right? Mm. And your story basically encapsulates this person mm. yourself who's trying to get da'wah, who's trying to basically find their purpose in life. Mm. And Muslims are shy to give you that. Muslims well, are shy to tell so, you. Yeah, they were, they, right? they, they, but they didn't know how to. From your perspective, I mean, you live in Luton, and yeah. Luton, uh, for anyone that knows about Luton, is, yeah. is a very Pakistani populated, yeah, yeah. a lot of Bengalis, yeah. right? Um, from my experience, more so Pakistani, a populated place. I mean, what, what's your experience with living in Luton currently? Do you still still see that kind of shyness with regards to Islam? And it, it's better. Okay, it, it's better. Obviously, in thing. time, there's a, there's a general morphing of communities, isn't there? Nice, but yeah. it's still it's, seg it's still it's separated, okay. and still there is no. Um, there's no doubt towards English people, and I, and I believe the reason for that, personally mm. speaking, I'm not, I'm not sort of an expert on these issues, but the reason for that is because Muslims generally are people of color, whether they're black or brown or some type of a shade, yeah, and they always see white people as it, it's not really for them. They're shy. They're shy to give, even though they'll say, yeah, you know, this religion is for the world, it's for the humanity and everything mm. else, but they don't translate that. They don't communicate that over. Mm. So they'll just they'll be happy to give a, a dawah to say to a, a young black lad mm. or black lady or 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 an at or or someone from the far east. Maybe they'll feel more comfortable. Yeah, they doing feel more that. comfortable with that, you know. So, but when it comes to giving it to white people, they're a little bit standoff, a little bit. Oh, maybe he's not interested. And the same applies then to the white community. The white community, we think, the white community would think that Islam is a religion for them. Ah. It's not a religion for us. It's not. A, which is why when white people find out that you're Muslim, they're, they're they're more shocked than what you are. What kind of reactions do you get? It from, varies from colleagues and stuff like that. That you're you're a Muslim. Colleagues. Yeah, like on building sites. Yeah, like okay. on building sites. I okay. mean, I thought they were workmates, but yeah, well, workmates, <laughs> okay. colleagues. Yeah, I'm gonna go with colleague. Yeah, yeah, right, yeah. Um, you know, it varies. I mean, mostly, you know, surprises is, is common. But before you go into your your colleagues at work, you you, you gotta understand your family. Mm. You got to go and tell your mum or your dad if they're alive. You got to go and tell mm. your girlfriend if you have at that time. You might have a girlfriend, your brothers, your sisters, your immediate friends that you hang with, and you chill. You know, like your friends, friends, your friend mm. circles. Mm. Uh, it varies from it will pass. Nah, this is like it will pass. It's nah, just I mean, you'll get over this. Yeah, give him a f six months, a year. We'll be through this one. The, that that's a common. Uh, thing, some people are a bit more like, "What do you want to do that for? What do you mean you can't do this? What do you mean you can't do that?" Well, you know, and it's a bit like, "Well, why would you do this to yourself? Why would you put yourself in a position where you can't do everything?" You know, I think, I think, um, you know, one of the things I've seen in you, and I hope you don't mind me saying this, but with you, mashallah, tabarakallah, it's, it's, you really encapsulate what you're saying, which, mm. which is basically that you're saying about how Islam is seen as like this foreign thing to white people, right? Yeah, and, and. You know the way you talk 
the way you are, etc. Like, and and what the way you look. If a Muslim saw you, yeah, on a building site, especially yeah. right, you have the stereotype like building site, yeah, cigarette, cup of coffee. Yeah. I in don't your smoke, hand, whatever. No, no, but I'm saying <laughs> this is yeah. this is. Like but I understand. Kind of yeah, it's the stereo stereotype. John, John the builder. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's a stereotype. Yeah. but seeing that person, mm. obviously without a cigarette, right? Mm. Maybe with a coffee. Definitely right? with a coffee. Yeah. Yeah. As a Muslim, yeah, is is fascinating. Mm. Even even for Muslims, mm. whereas they shouldn't really be fascinated with that. Because no. if you truly believe Islam, yeah. is a way of life, mm. and as Allah says in the Quran, kulli qawmin had that there was a guide for all people, mm. right? And all people encapsulates white people, mm. black people, brown people, Chinese people, mm. whatever people there are, mm. it encapsulates them. Yeah, yeah. I'm using the word encapsulate a lot today. Yeah, that's all right. We'll go with it. Bro. I'm <laughs> we'll gonna start go using it. it myself. We'll, now, we'll yeah. go with it. Right? You're not the only one that's gonna use it. <laughs> I'm just realizing now. Yeah. <laughs> new, new word. Yeah. So, when you see that, yeah, our mentality is it's true. Yeah. And and it does seem familiar what you're saying. You know, yeah. where where we will keep, feel more comfortable to speak to people from, I don't know, like Christian Arabs mm. or like black people who are non-Muslims, yeah, etc. And if we're speaking about race, but the white person. Is maybe seen as a foreign thing. Well, to I, this. I can't tell you how many times I've been in a mosque, okay, and I've been in a mosque, and this is the question that all white reverts will tell you that they get: mm. Where are you from? <laughs> where are you from? Okay, I'm from Luton. No, 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 no. Where are you really from? Well, I'm really from Luton. No, no. Okay, where's your father from? Well, he's from Luton too. I said, no. Where, where's origin? Where's his origin? Okay, but you tell me where you want him to be from, and we'll put him from there. Yeah, <laughs> you know, we can be from anywhere, because they can't grip that you're a Muslim and you're white. Yeah. In a mosque it, today, I, I could go to a mosque today and uh, find that experience. Most white Muslims, every white revert you know, has you found think, experience. You think that doesn't happen? No, that happens every day. But if I go to the mosque two times in a day, for an example, yeah, that will probably happen three three times in a week, or outside of a mosque. You know, in you know. Coffee shop or chicken and chips or something like that. You know, we, uh, are you Muslim? Are you Muslim, brother? Okay, where are you from? Okay, I know where they're getting at. Oh, I'm from Luton. I really should just cut the conversation down and say I'm from England. You know, I'm English, bro. I'm English. That's that's what you're really asking me. Yeah, yeah. Oh, but where are you originally from? Where's your family from? But yeah, they're from England too. Ah, and then they're looking at you. They they don't want to go it, but they can't help themselves. They're gonna say, so where's your dad from? You know, they give that. They want to ask because I, I sometimes I tease a little bit as well. Mm-hmm. I, I let come up. I'm gonna drag you through this but it's confusing for them to know it's confusing for muslims to see you as a white muslim and i've been in a mosque yeah after prayer mm. and people have gone up we've been in like a you know sometimes you you, you stand around in groups and you have a little chat of each yeah, other yeah. Okay, so, and a guy will come up salam alaikum salam alaikum salam alaikum are you okay salam alaikum salam Bro, what do you think I am doing in here you know what I mean uh, seriously no bro all the time it's all the time wow yeah and i'm not saying it's all the time it's not like it's happened to me once. I remember this time. No, it's happened to me. I don't know how many times. I mean, it's refreshing to get this perspective because mm. um, obviously that won't happen to me. It won't happen to some of the other. No, of course brothers, it won't. No, right? of course it won't. But it's happening to you, and it's a real thing. So, I mean, let's put the question to you then, yeah, Dawi, right? Okay, you're a Muslim now. Mm. Been a Muslim, mashallah, for 23 years. Yeah. May Allah keep you steadfast. I mean, how do we give dawah to our white friends? Maybe Aisha's listening. Muhammad's yeah. listening. Right at yeah. home, Zaid, yeah. Yeah. some Muslim names, right? They're listening at home. They've got some white friends in their class, right? Yeah. How do you treat them? How do you give them that? Okay. They feel a bit embarrassed on the back foot, right? Yeah. I'm Muslim, stuff's going on in the media. How am I supposed to speak to this white person about this like controversial thing about me, which is I'm a Muslim? Okay, be natural. Firstly, you know, anyone that's acting to what they're not, other people are going to sense the energy off of them. You know what I mean? Mm. Be natural and connect with them. Mm. You don't have to hit them. Sorry, brother, let me tell you about Islam because mm. there's, make a conversation with them. Build a sort of a, a, a some type of a, a, a bond between mm. them. Okay, yeah, yeah. they see you as human. They see you as like them. You know, he's just a guy. This guy's got a beard. He's brown. He's got a hat on. But actually, he's just like me. He's just another. He's just another bloke. And once they see that, then you can start connecting them. And I think with white people as well, you, you can't come across with too much chapter and verse straight away. Mm. You know, common sense is the is the is the first step. You know, after the, that you've made some sort of initial yeah. contact with them and you've built up some type of a rapport with them. Okay, yeah. don't just start hitting them with you know you don't believe in God. Why not? And don't be overly forceful. You know, mm. you know, giving dawah is, is is a little bit more about wisdom than it is about knowledge. In, in a sense that you need a certain amount of knowledge but you need to know how to apply it more than anything you know mm. and just whacking them and beating them sometimes you just got to engage the person read the person mm. is this person receptive to how I'm talking to them yeah, if yeah. they're not ease it down a bit yeah, if yeah. they're the type of person that likes to that then mm. tone it up a little bit 
you know so that just comes with experience and it, again what you understand is that white people are just as suspicious of you as you are of them <laughs> you know what I mean so you, it's your job now to you're bringing a message mm. to them so you've got to break that barrier not yeah. them it's your job to break that barrier mm. so if you're going to be suspicious with them and they're going to be suspicious with you you've got two, two, two separate people here and there's no bridge in the middle so there's, there, there's never going to be any you know for you to get them to believe in Islam is going to be very difficult if they can't believe in you as an, as an ordinary bloke which is why I just talk like I talk what happens I think from my experience from me personally and but what I've seen other white reverts I think it runs the same for black reverts but I, obviously their situation would be a bit more for them but when you become Muslim as a white girl, as a white dude yeah we our culture in this country because black people have a certain culture if they're West Indian or something they'll have a certain West Indian food and West mm. Indian culture which is quite strong well white people is a little bit more sort of general okay mm. like I said I went to church if you were dead or you getting married or getting buried okay so you you tend to become Muslim and you tend to adopt an Islamic culture mm. so that might for the most part be Pakistanified is yeah. it if that, that ain't a, I don't know if that's a word but you know what I mean yeah, yeah, yeah. no it's not a word is it it makes sense though. it makes sense it, right. makes okay, it works okay so you tend to adopt another personality and 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 you and, and you, you tend to um invent a character for yourself. change your food you, you change think. your dress you change yeah. your food you change your looks you change the way you talk <laughs> you change you change everything about you until yeah. the, you get to the point where you don't really recognize what's you now mm. now if it's strange for you how's it going to be for your mum for your dad for your brother for your sister for your mates for, mm. it's going to be strange for them too isn't it because you've mm -hmm. you've totally changed because white people got they 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 they, they tend to go quite you know they come into the religion honestly you know they they want to and then but they tend to overly you know change themselves you know and it, and then it takes them several years sometimes it could take you know more than 10 or years or so for them to refine themselves but somewhere in the middle some of them get lost hmm. you know so they either lose the religion or they maybe go a little bit over the you know a little bit I wouldn't say mad but you know they go a little bit intense hmm. so you know it, it's, it's it's and this is where Muslims need to help them Okay. You know, the actual, the, the community that already, but you can take your time, man. If you track suit, if you're happy in tracksuit and t-shirt, wear it. You don't have to wear a hat. You don't, you don't have yeah. to make massive changes straight away. And then you, you don't, you don't even recognize you. Yeah. You know, so the sisters, you know, like the, the English sisters will start wearing in the carbs, like within six months of being a Muslim. Mm. But then two years later, you see all that hijab on. Mm. Completely, mm. you know, it's better to take it in in manageable yeah. steps and maintain your personality. You know, if you if you're sort of a light-hearted banter type of guy, like I'm, a, I'm a little bit like that. Yeah. That's your personality, bruv. Keep it. Yeah. Don't try and act pious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, w w how is that stopping you from being pious? Well, I mean, it's not, is it? But that's yeah, how they not. think they have to be. Yeah, exactly. They, they yeah, have yeah. to play a role, so they invent yeah. a character for themselves, and then they then they sort of live to that character, and then they realize that this isn't me. You know, yeah. it's not really me. One one of the things that you yeah. mentioned, you know, uh, earlier, which I found amazing, is you said that you give dawah, mm. um, like on the building site, etc., yeah. like every single day, every day, you know, and and that's a very confident statement. Like to say I'm doing something every day. Yeah, and you're saying you're doing it every single day. Every day. What's what wh what is the driving force of that? Like, what's pushing you to give dawah? Like, because that I want day? to. Because there's a need to. There's a need to. You know, this religion, it, like we said, but we we all know that this religion is for humanity, but there is a there seems to be a barrier stopping it from going to white people in mm. this country. You know, mm. whether that's lack of experience from the Muslims or, or it's it's from both sides. Obviously. So, have you spoken to like white people, like the like some of these guys who are builders or like white? Just I've, general I've spoken white to the who, most racist, right wing, EDL extremists that you could find if you if you went out looking for them. Really? Yeah. And what's their reaction when they find out you're? Well, you're sometimes a see, I play it, like I said, I play it on the person. Yeah. You know, sometimes now I'm in a canteen full of. White Jack guys. the lads, you know, yeah. Yeah, builders and bricklayers and chippies and, and things like this, carpenters, as it were. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> you got to be confident. Yeah. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm not, I'm not really scared of anybody, even though I'm not tough, but I'm not scared of anybody. Yeah. So I'm a little bit confident. Yeah. Sometimes I won't tell anyone I'm Muslim. I can work for you for months and months and not tell you that I'm Muslim, mm -hmm. but I'll be nice, I'll be polite, I'll be respectful, I'll be helpful, and then if it, this, this is, this is, he's all right, this fella, this Dow is a nice lad. Then I tell them I'm Muslim. When they start coating off Muslims or they start re saying something about Islam, what they've seen on TV, like uh, terrorists and the usual sort of publicity that people talk about, ah, this lot, because they mm. don't know I'm Muslim. What's their reaction like? Sometimes I get blunt, yeah. and sometimes I just start breaking it down because all hatred is 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 either lack of knowledge or wrong knowledge. But like they must be shocked. When yeah, they, they are think... shocked. Good. So that I use that shock. Yeah, exactly. You know what I mean, yeah. I use that back on them, yeah. you know. So, and, and then once they realize that, but you're Dawi. Yeah, I know. But I'm Dawi that prays five times a day, mate. Mm. I'm Dawi that don't drink alcohol. I'm Dawi that, 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 you know, believes in this religion. So, what's the problem? 
well, am I different now? Am I not? Am I not the Dowie that you spoke to five minutes ago? Mm. I'm the same guy, you know. It's just that all of those things, and 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 you know, then I say to me, you know, the, the reason I do these things is because I rush to do things that are good. Mm. My religion tells me to do things. That, if look, if your Islam doesn't bring you peace and doesn't make your life better, then you're doing it wrong. Mm. This, you're doing something wrong. You yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean. So if I'm going to help you out at work or help you out on the street, I'm not going to say, "Brother, I'm doing it because I'm Muslim." I'll let you find that. Mm. You know, <laughs> and if I think there's a benefit for the, you know, for Muslims to tell you that I'm a Muslim, then I'll tell them. Yeah. But you know, you got to understand on the building side, I will, I will learn more by not telling you. Mm. I'll let their personality come out. I'll let their racism come out, their ignorance come out, and then I'll. Have you ever had a time like that? Bro, I have times like that three or four times a week. Seriously, yeah, of where, where things are said about Muslims. And yeah, stuff. bro, come on, all the time. Wow. Yeah, all the time. Okay, I was working in the this site. This is like refreshing. Yeah, this is like amazing. in Baker Street. Yeah, in, it was a big, big building site in Baker Street in London, and on the toilets. Once they knew I was Muslim, yeah. um, they because they all they were all West Ham lads and Millwall lads, and they writ disgusting things on the toilet wall about Islam and things. Mm. I don't want to go into, but you can imagine. Yeah. Okay. So you know, at that point, then, bro, you know, I know my people. You know, I know what they're like. So I, I just come out into the site and offered every one of them out. I fight a lot of you. I walk through the lot of you. I probably would have got tucked in by the first one, but I mean, you got to be like that. I mean, mm. there's That's a time. Like the language that works. Yeah, there, there's a time. It, I, there's a time to be like you're that. You're basically letting them know, like, yeah, you know, I'm just like you, kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, right? yeah. I am you. Yeah, but I'm, I'm just a Muslim. Yeah, and 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 it's the Islam that benefits me, not me that benefits Islam. You know, yeah. I, it brings to me. I don't bring yeah. anything to it. You know what I mean? So. But most of the time, I would say nine times out of ten, it's um, it's it's productive for me. It's it, it's I get the message across just fine. And most of them, then, I mean, and and if I get it, you know, if I get a reason, you mm -hmm. know, if I get something, I say, you know, I'll give you an example, a real life story. Okay. Okay. I was working on a site up in Luton, and we we're all white lads, and 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 myself, and we was working on a site and. This we was working in an old age pension. We was re rebuild, refurbishing an old age pension as okay. And some little old lady that works that lives there had fallen over on the street, and some Pakistani lad with a big beard and a hat, stereotypical Pakistani, he mm. picked her up, put her in his car, and drove her to the. She'd broken her arm, by the way. She'd mm. she'd busted. And this her is like and, a white lady. No, she, yeah, she was a white lady. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He wasn't. He was Pakistani. Yeah. And he drove her, and we come out to the car park. We picked her up. We we put her in the reception and. And uh, you know we put a bandage on and all the rest of it, okay. Mm. And this lad here, he was in, he was concerned. He like he left me his number. I said, please, you know, when you call the ambulance, let me know how she gets on. So I said, bro, thanks a lot. You know what I mean? I appreciate your help and everything else. That's that's nice of you. We thought you was a taxi driver, but he wasn't. He was just a a, a fella that drove past a woman and seen her and he picked her up, put her in the car, and drove her to the care home, mm. okay. So I go to the guy. So you see, look at him coming over here, picking up our old ladies off the street. <laughs> driving them to their care homes, caring. We don't need them. Send them back, mate. You know what I mean? I use things like that. You know, I use things like that. I, I, That's I, so beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah. with white people use humour. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Look at them. Hey, hey coming. How do they think they are? Coming over here, picking up people off and the like, street. What's the reaction? No, but they're laughing, but they can see. I say, look, brother, you know what? They that, know it's this reality to what you're yeah, saying. And yeah, and I say, yeah, you know yeah. what? That guy there, he goes home to the same wife, the same bills, like you do. the same dinner. He's got the same everything. He's, he's, you know, he's not an alien. Do you know what's beautiful about what you're saying, Dawi? Is because you're basically humanizing Muslims. Yeah. At a time where they dehumanize. Well, this is it, right? Whenever you dehumanize anybody, bro, anything becomes possible. Yeah. And history yeah. has taught us that. Exactly. Exactly. You know, when I they mean, wanted to drop a bomb on 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 Japan, they dehumanize them. When they wanted to go into into Vietnam, they dehumanize them. When they wanted to make the transatlantic slave trade, they used pseudo I mean, science to dehumanize black people. That's what I'm studying. Everything's right possible. Now. I'm studying uh, colonialism and. Um, one of the things that I find powerful about it is when when these people were picked up from the West Indies, Jamaica, Martin Bay and all of these places and they, then they had the Martin Bay uprisings and Martinique and all of these places, mm. they were dehumanized first, yeah. right? First they were dehumanized and first they went to them and they let them know we're the civilizing race, yeah. right? We're going to civilize you, yeah. right? And then they had the ability to kill them even and mm. it wasn't questioned mm. it wasn't questioned mm. even from some amongst those people who they had brainwashed and kind of made the elite of those people mm. they accepted it right and it's all about dehumanization yeah so what what that incident just taught me is that you've basically humanized that brother now and as yeah. a result of that humanized muslims and that's an act of dawah where now the next time they see a sister maybe in niqab yeah. Right, where she's like fully blacked out or whatever, and they see a brother with a big beard. Brother, I get it all the time. The niqab question. Yeah. I, I, I can talk about all of them. 
because they always speak about niqab this why do you have to wear this thing why do they cover up I get all that every day imagine that comes up all of the time yeah you know so when we're talking about going back to the point about dehumanizing this I suppose it's obviously the media for the most part that dehumanizes the, the people it I mean, plays towards it yeah. well it's the ma- how, how do you know anything if you're just an ordinary bloke you yeah. either seen it on TV or you heard it on the radio or you've well, seen yeah, it on yeah. Facebook or something innit? Yeah. so there's a media that brought it to you okay so they, when they dehumanise black people that's still there because we can see black kids starving in Africa and we're sad okay but it, it's kind of normal it's mm. kind of we, we're, we're a little bit numb to it unfortunately you know what I mean if you used to see a white kid it's massive news not yeah. that it shouldn't be news but I'm saying like one life still seems to be more important than the other, if 100%. you know what I mean. You know, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. It, it still seems to be that way. And so, if they need to destroy, I don't know. I want to get into conspiracies. So I don't. I don't really go down them roads. But if you have an agenda against a religion, for example, you have to dehumanize the people in that religion. And for the most part, they are people of color with Islam. Mm-hmm. Unfo- you know, I say unfortunately, but I would like to see white people in it as well. As, as much as of course as, uh, you would I mean because yeah. that's your people right? well not just because it's I my mean, people because no. when white people get involved in things bro things move mm. we took Christianity and now everyone's got it mm. that was from the Middle East as soon as the Romans got hold of it they, now everyone's now America you know, it becomes the white religion mm. they've white fight it that's it, a you know? very interesting point yeah, yeah, you know, yeah so yeah, we yeah. don't do things by halves yeah. you know, we, there was always slavery in Africa there was always slavery the east african slave trade was going on for 700 years before the transatlantic slave trade mm. we just did it on an industrial scale i mean we just did it, Made it bigger like into we millions, just, yeah. yeah we just did it you know they say unf- they're from like 10 million to 100 million slaves yeah right yeah. well i think it's 100 million a, uh, a, a year or something yeah. so i don't know the exact figures it was, figures, was a crazy figure crazy figures, yeah so yeah. so when when we when when we when we de- this idea is an agenda to dehumanize and my whole thing is that these people are just like you they are you mm. i'm you mm. i was you Five minutes ago, what's the difference? Yeah, you know, and and what kind of results have you had from? Have Good. you ever had people becoming Muslims or like no, no, I mean, at least interested or like their minds are open a bit? You know, I've I've had people that have um, you know, because then 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 at that point you've opened the door to talk about the religion. One hundred percent. Now the door is open and you can, they all start in, engaging in questions. They'll even start asking you a question. Say, okay, well, what about that then? Okay, now now your job's easier. You understand? Once they start asking you, your job's easier. You, you can start answering the questions. Yeah. But you've had to open that. You had to put the door in front of them and open it. Mm. And now once they, the questions start coming through, your job becomes easier. Now you can start explaining the religion to them. Mm. You know, what's so different about it? I'll tell you what, you know, it's, it, you know, it's, it, it's a, when I, when I said to my mum and dad, because actually my, 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 uh, when I become Muslim, I, I moved out of my then girlfriend's house back into my parents' house, okay? okay. And, after a year or so, my mum and dad become Muslim. Wow. And then um, my eldest boy's child become Muslim. Then her sister become Muslim. Then their uh, husband become Muslim. And then it, it kind of spread out Allahu Akbar. a little bit. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Wow. So my dad was, um, before my dad become Muslim, he'd say, right, he'd go, what's this religion, son? What, I mean, what, what, what are you doing with this thing, you know? So I goes, dad, you know, the problem with this religion is, is that it makes you respect your parents. It makes you give charity. It stops you from drinking. It stops you from taking drugs. It stops you from going out there and having girlfriends. That's the problem with it. Hmm. There ain't no problem with this. You know what I mean? Hmm. If your kid come home to you and said, I'm not going to go out and do drugs, I'm not going to go out You're and drink. I'm not going to be worried about him. But well, what's, what am I worried about? Yeah. <laughs> what, what am I, what, why am I afraid of this thing that's only making him do good things? You know, why am I afraid of this thing that's only bringing a benefit to him? He used to go, you'll get, because he would come out to go to the toilet early in the morning and he would see me praying in the bedroom you know mm. the door the, the hallway light would be on and I wouldn't turn the bedroom light because it's too bright and then and he would come to me the next day go you used to be coming in at this time and now you're getting up to pray Subhan- you know what I mean so he would he would uh, see that side of it and he'd say well there's nothing wrong with this and then he started looking into my dad started looking into religion and and then he, he did, and he died about uh, 2011, and we gave him a janaza, and Allah it was it was nice. You know, what I'm saying like a big, 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 big uh, turnout for him, mashallah. Yeah. Amazing. And you know what? This reminds me of the ayah um, in Surah Talaq, where Allah mm. says, "Rasulun yatlu alaykum ayat Allahi mubayyinat li yukhraj al-ladin amanu wa amilu salihati min al-zulumati ila al-nur." That Allah sent the Messenger, sallallahu alaihi wasallam, to take those who believe. Mm. So you have to believe. Mm to take those who believe from the darknesses that they were in mm. into the light right and your father rahimullah he clearly saw that mm. right he saw the light where he, where, where, where he where, where he sees like you 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 were this person mm. like this mm. right 
and now you're like that. Mm. So like your actions showed him. And subsequently, he also became a Muslim and your whole family. What would you say the main thing has been um, to bringing your family to Islam? The main thing that has appealed to all of them? If you were to put one common fact, is it the fact that you changed? No, what I, is it? I, I think it's, the, it, 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 it's not the fact that I changed. It, it's the manners. Yeah. You know, they're just the character. You know, when yes. they see, because look, because they're non-Muslims and they're white, there's a suspicion about them. There. But it, most non-Muslim white guys on building sites, they're decent lads. Mm -hmm. They're family guys. They're decent guys. They're not. They're not. They're not aliens either. Yeah. No, know? it's just because of what they've been fed. Well, of course it is. Yeah, you know, they're yeah, a product yeah. of their environment and and the, and the information that they've been fed. Yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. if you've always been fed that you that white is better than brown or black, you you would then probably course, think why that. wouldn't you believe it? Yeah. You know, yeah. why wouldn't you think that way? I mean, you know, everything is. It's the opposite. It's like it's positive reinforcement for them and negative for everyone else. But mm. why wouldn't they believe it? So for, for me, I think it's character and behavior. And mm. I, you know, and, and with these guys, you know, they, they, they just need to be told. Like I said, there is a difference between hearing about something and knowing about something. Yeah. You can hear about something. I mean, you know about it. But I heard about rocket science. I couldn't tell you. I couldn't build your rocket. Mm. You, know, you know what I mean? Yeah. So loads of people have heard about Islam. Yeah. Not that mean they know about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, because yeah. what you heard from the news, from from ISIS or from this group or from this terrorist or something like this. Okay, you've heard of Islam, haven't you? Yeah, I know about Islam. What do you know? I don't know. Yeah. What? Well, yeah, it's them, innit? Yeah. Well, yeah. What? You, yeah, it's them. I was speaking with a. She was a mature lady. She was retired, private headmistress of private schools, high up, high level schools. Yeah. Posh schools. Okay. All right. She retired. Lovely, lovely lady. I mean, she's a really nice lady. Older lady, mature. And uh, I was talking to her, and um, she's very educated. She's got a very nice English accent and that. And we got talking a little bit about religion, okay? And she didn't know that Muslims believed in angels. Mm -hmm. You've been teaching the people that are leading us. You're the teacher of these high private schools that's been teaching the people that are going to lead us, and you don't know that Muslims have angels. Mm -hmm. So if she doesn't know... What's John the Chippy going to know? What's Dave the Painter going to know? I mean, that's a fundamental belief. That's one of the pillars yeah, of the Yeah, they yeah. don't know that. Don't think because they've heard of it, they know about it. So we have a responsibility to go mm. out and tell them about it. We have a responsibility to connect with them. You know, all these projects where we go out, where Muslims go, Muslims do so much good, okay, in the communities, never gets highlighted. Bad, bad news sells. Bad, ne ne hate, hate, there's money in hate, you know what I mean? Okay. When Muslims go out and do the charitable projects like feeding the, the, like the homeless and, and all the it doesn't get, there's no exposure. Why, don't, why ain't that seen? Why is it when, you know, a Muslim, five Muslim youths do this, but you get like five or ten football lads do that, it's just f football fans. Their, their ethnicity and their religion isn't brought into that, is it? Yes. But it's brought into it if they're Muslim. So yeah. this negative publicity, we've, we've got, we've just got a bigger job of countering it. You mm. know, we're up for the fight. You know, we're up for that battle. Of mm. countering it, mm. we, we wouldn't be giving it up if we wouldn't, would we? Mm. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. You know. So, so now tell me, what was one of the main things that you struggled with when you became a Muslim? Um, changing too fast. Okay. Yeah, changing. Like I said, changing too fast, going from sort of n not knowing anything. Yeah. To there should be a structure. Mm. Okay, we need structure. Anything that you do, you got to have structure to do it. Yeah. I'm. Le firstly, I was taking information off of every Tom, Dick, and Harry. Yeah. Everyone becomes a scholar. <laughs> they know that you're a white Muslim, yeah. they're a scholar. Everyone wants to teach you something, yeah. okay? So you, look, you wouldn't do that in any other walk of life. If you was learning medicine, you wouldn't just go up to anyone and start to, oh, you're gonna be a doctor. Let me tell you about this. Yeah. No, you need, to, you need to learn it in steps. St like anything that you learn in a college or a university, in school, you learn it in steps and you learn it in stages and, yeah. and, you, and you take your time and you process it as you go along. I was picking up information from everybody uh, all of the time, you know? I know that their intention was just to help me, they was excited and they was enthusiastic to teach me or say, but it, sometimes it don't help, okay? So the, the, the reverts need to go, there needs to be something in place for them, I'm sure there is stuff, but there needs to be something in place for them where they can actually structure their learning and take their time and step yeah. at a time, yeah? The second thing that, that for me, you, you know, all your behavioral patterns change, your social circles change, your look changes, yeah? I mean, there was a time when I had a, a, a long beard down to here and it changes and, um, you know, like I said, sometimes you, you just got to be you and you stop being you. For, I stopped being me for a little while and, I've, and that caused me a bit of confusion. I was like, Actually, this ain't me. Why, why can't I be Muslim and me? Do I, if I'm Muslim, does it mean I have to be someone else? Mm -hmm. No, you can still be you. You're still you. You just don't swear. 
and you just don't do that. You've got principles that you live by. That's, that's it, yeah. yeah. And that's There's it. Certain it's, principles. Yeah. You don't have to be some. You don't have to put on a facade. You know, you don't yeah. have to invent a character and live behind it. You mm. can just be you. And I think that takes time, a little bit of maturity, yeah. and it also takes wisdom from the people that have been in the religion a little while, like reverts that have been in the religion, to sit with the the, the reverts and say, "Bro, just you know what I mean? It's okay. Do this in stages." And there was a stage as well where I where I. Um, because you're, you're, you're idealistic and you're going to make mistakes. It's human beings. You know, 100%. we all sin. I sin every day, I suppose, definitely. So, but then as you revert, they squash you hmm. because you, you hold yourself in this esteem. In the, you want to be like the Prophet Salaam. You want to be like, but you can't. Yeah, so you, you, you let the sins overwhelm you and you become disheartened yeah. and you become like, oh God, no, I didn't do. Yeah, <sighs> yeah. You know, yeah. so you become, so that can be a bit pressurizing yeah. too, you know. Um, Rushing to get married, hmm. you know anyone that's been—I know brothers that I'm not married at the minute—but any brother out there that's been Muslim for less than five years, don't get married. Wait hmm. five years. I know. If you, well, wait five years. I don't blame you. I don't want to wait five years, but yeah. you got to find time. yourself. Yeah, it's yeah. a long time. But you got—I'm I'm only saying that because in that five years of you becoming Muslim and you Muslim, you got changes to make. You got adaptations to accept yourself. Yeah. You understand? You 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 got to you got to find your path and settle down and and sort of get yourself some stability. Mm. I mean, not at five years for everyone. I'm just giving a number. It could it, be less. Basically, when you're ready. Yeah, when, when you're ready. When, when but you're don't, stable. But right. don't do it too quickly. Yeah. Because you're making all these changes and you're going to get married to women that you probably don't know very well. And then you know it's it that can be problematic. You don't want to div get married and then divorce five years and two kids later, do you? You know what I mean? So mm -hmm. you want to sort of keep it. You know, be a little bit patient on that one. You know what yeah. I mean? Um, you know, I, and when I become Muslim at first, I cut off all my non-Muslim friends. You know, that was a mistake. Mm. You know, not because I go out and drink with them or anything like that. But it was a mistake because how could they help him if I don't if I don't talk to him? Yeah. Well, am I selfish now? You know, and all the people around me, ah, oh, brother, Aki, you shouldn't mix with the kuffar and this and that. So I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, I'm not going to mix with the kuffar. Why don't I tell him? Mm. You, you can't be an enemy and tell them. You have to be somewhat friendly with them, innit? You know, you, you can't, you know, it doesn't mean I have to go out with them and drink like I used to, but I still can tell them. Mm. Can, you know, I've got a responsibility to them, haven't I, you know? Mm. I believe we've got a responsibility in this country to, to, to tell everyone, not convince them, but at least to tell them. Uh, tell them information, not just the heard religion of Islam. You know, one thing that I've noticed amongst Muslims is that curiosity is a, is a really, really big thing, mm. right? Uh, I even experienced it, like, because obviously I grew up as a Muslim um, in a practicing household, fairly conservative, well, conservative, to be honest with you. And um, there's things that you, like, for Alhamdulillah, mm. and it's not a temptation for me, Alhamdulillah, but I've never drunk, I've mm. never done any drugs, I've, mm. I've never, like, done any of these things that um, are seen as the norm to some people, mm. right? But I found in some, of, in some of our households, some Muslims may be watching this, this is seen as a temptation, right? Um, even, even things like um, other, thi other ways of life, they may feel inferior, Mm. You know, oh, I haven't gone into philosophy. Oh, atheism. Oh, it seems mm. interesting. Oh, it seems academic, right? Mm. Or Christianity. I mm. haven't looked into it. Like, and they feel like because they haven't looked into it or experienced these things, mm. like other people may have, like maybe you have, mm. right? You're, you're firm because you know you've been there and done that and you know what it's about, mm. right? But for a person who's never been there, never done that, mm. there's this curiosity. What would you say to a person who's, who's going through that currently? Yeah, but look, it's better to leave it in your head than it is live it out. Mm. You know what I mean? If that's a curiosity, it's a curiosity firstly from the shaitan because there's nothing, there's no life better than Islam. Mm. Okay, and, and you can say that from experience. Yeah, I can say that. Look, if it was so good, I'd still be doing it. You know, I'd still be out there drinking. <laughs> yeah. I'd still be out there popping pills. I'd still be out there getting on it. I'd, I, I'm not doing it because I, I didn't want to do it then. Mm. I've been high on, let's say, ecstasy when I was, I used to go raving. I'd t pop a few of them, yeah? Mm. I'd never been so low as when I was high. SubhanAllah. You know what I mean? Deep. I've never been so low as when I was high. Deep. You know? I've been there. I'm not to say that, you know, but I know from experience when I was in that world, everybody was the same. If you're happy, bro, you don't need to drink. Mm. Drinks are depressant anyway, but by the way. And in my house, in an English house, drink is like curry to you lot. You know what I mean? We <laughs> we, we don't do anything without drink. Yeah, okay? Yeah. We don't do nothing without drink. Yeah. Someone comes around, have a drink. Birthday, have a drink. Summit decent on telly, have a drink. You know what I mean? Everything was drink, you know? At the age of... I don't know, probably six or seven I was drinking. Actually, they put whiskey in my bottle to send me to sleep. No Milk, Yeah, way. my mum would put whiskey, a nip of whiskey in my bottle. Probably get done for child abuse at this day, mm. these days, wouldn't you? But then, yeah, that was like, they put a nip of whiskey in my bottle to knock me out at night so I'd sleep. <laughs> my dad would have some of his friends around when I was probably, what, seven or eight. He'd call me from upstairs and come down here, son. He'd pull me a glass of whiskey. I'd drink the whiskey in front of his mates. 
stay a few minutes, go upstairs, out of my head, drunk. My son can drink, see? When he's 18, he'll be all right. He won't, he'll be out to handle it. It was just a culture back then. It's a different world back then. You know what I mean? It was like a long time ago. I'm 49, so wow. it was a long time ago. But drink was just everywhere. Mm -hmm. I didn't miss, for the first, actually, I stopped drinking three days before I went to the mosque. You know, I said I went to the mosque and I said, you know, this Muslim lot, they don't, they don't drink. Okay, so I'm not going to drink out of respect for three days before I go to that mosque and wow. ask him the question. Wow. And I didn't drink after, since wow. I didn't drink after that, you know. I, I, I didn't eat pork since I was about 19, 17, 18 or 19. No one told me about Islam or, or Judaism or anything like that. I just, I don't like this animal. I don't like the taste of this. I don't, something about that meat didn't taste right to me. In fact, before I was a Muslim, I was actually a vegetarian. Hmm. I'm not far from a vegetarian now. I don't eat a great amount of meat, but... um. Uh, I didn't eat pork but you know it, all of these I, I, I can bring you bloke after bloke after bloke in his 40s who will tell you that's a waste of time that drinking and pill popping and sniffing it's a waste of time don't do it and now they get in the later years they, they don't do it they don't even if they're not Muslim they, they've, they've abandoned it you know what I mean because it's done nothing but bring them grief mm. so look. so essentially what I think is look you're a Muslim yeah be proud of it you're upon the truth. You just, were raised just, in a family like that's upon the truth. It's a blessing, yeah. right? Just because you haven't gone through yeah. the trials and the and the fitting and like the pr issues, right? Mm. And the tests of of having, you know, like maybe some of the things you went through yeah. in your life doesn't mean you desire it, right? And essentially, get out there and share that blessing with other people, yeah. right? Um, I like to I, I like to compare Islam, the blessing of it, to being born uh, as a millionaire, right? Yeah. I mean, people who are born as millionaires, a billionaire now, or, or like billionaires, yeah. right? Think you, big. You're never gonna see them um, say, "I wonder how it is being poor to be a homeless person <laughs> on the street <laughs> with nothing." I wonder what it's right. like to be a white van driver. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I no. mean, and even if it's curiosity, they'll do it for two days and think, "Oh, this yeah. is nonsense." Because they can change back. Exactly. They can change their life back again. We can't. Ch they can change down. We can't change up. I mean, Islam <laughs> is more valuable than that because oh, money is something. It doesn't bring you that mm. contentment in the heart, right? And we don't need to speak about that. That's a given. We've spoken about it so many times. Islam gives you that contentment. Mm. And you feel that every day as a Muslim. Mm. Why would you not want that for other people? You know, um, there, there's, there's the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu that one of you has not believed until he believes, uh, until he wishes for his brother what yeah. he wishes for himself, yeah. right? And Imam al namawi you know, the mm. great scholar, um, he commented on this hadith and he actually mentioned that this is, this brother is brother in humanity. Mm. Right, and this khair, right, this this good, yeah, that's being spoken of, mm -hmm. is the good of Islam. Yeah, it's it's the best good that you can have. Mm. So you should wish Islam for your brother in humanity. Yeah, right, and it's the I mean it's it's the best thing that it's, you can have. It's and the, we feel shy to have that good, bro. Yeah, bro. It's the most selfish thing in the world. Okay, to have something that's that's as beautiful as Islam and it's free and not give it to someone else. Subhanallah, it's the most selfish thing. So, you can so do. what would you say? I mean, to conclude, I want to conclude, right? Mm. What would you say? Because it's been a very powerful podcast, you know, Jazakallah Khairan for coming no down, problem, taking anytime, Tim out of your busy schedule. You know, what would you say to these Muslims out there? You know, that's your yeah. camera. What would you say to these Muslims out there that are complacent? They don't, they're shy to speak about their religion to other people. They're shy to let white people know, mm. right, about Islam or like non, any non-Muslim know about yeah. Islam. What would you say to them? Bro, just approach them. They're human just like you, you know. If you don't, you got to build a bridge and you got to make a communication and tell them you've got something that they haven't got. Yeah. Okay, it's selfish of you not to tell them. Okay, of course you need a little bit of wisdom in delivery. You can't just bah, you have to be a little bit wise in how you do it. But tell them, you know, you're both human beings. You both breathe the same air. You you drink the same water. You know, you live under the same sky. You know, so if you're if you're shy to tell them, don't be. Just just look. I only don't tell people for a reason. They always end up knowing just because when I'm white in a building site, the racism and the anti-black or anti-Asian. You wait for the right time to do it. Yeah, I'll let them roll with it. I'll <laughs> let them roll with it. I'll let, let them expose their personality. Yeah. Then I could. But it's only ignorance. And all ignorance is lack of knowledge. If they don't like Islam, it's because they don't know about it. Yeah. Or, or they've been given the wrong information about it, mm -hmm. which is most likely a mix of the two. They yeah. don't know and they've been given the wrong information. So they don't like it. Yeah. Okay, so your job is what? To, to clarify. give them the right Yeah that's to it clarify, yeah. It's an easy thing And then if, if they don't accept it It's not your problem Yeah it's not your problem Our job is just to convey It's just to try yeah. It's just to give the message And that's it And I think that's that's another thing Is that you know When you're a new Muslim You want You are invested in convincing them mm -hmm. No You should be invested in telling them Yeah and that's it And, and that's it Yeah, and the, the convincing them Isn't your job You know what I mean mm -hmm. So yeah you know It's It's um, it, 
it's, it's, it's just about that. That's that's the advice that I would give on on, on that point there. I wouldn't um, I, I I I I wouldn't be shy to say, bro. You know, it's 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 free. They don't know. They hate Islam because they either don't know about it or they the wrong information about it or a mixture of the two. Okay, and that's it. So, and there's a shyness between, let's say, brown or black or whatever Muslims to tell white Muslims. Uh, sorry, to, to to tell white non-Muslims about Islam. They're just shy. There's like a, a shyness in it. I don't like. It. I think we mentioned before some. Yeah, there is a, a, there's it a, is a superiority. Yeah. Some people have inferiority complex. Do you know what I see? Like I'm at university, and what I see is that um, people are sh- like. I mean, I, I've given my Instagram out to. Mm. Or like, th- there's one 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 guy I came across, and um, I mean, when I go into uni, I'm just in uni, and I come out right. He doesn't know what I am, and w- w- if I'm religious or not, mm. right? You don't see me pray or anything. So um, this guy, like, I gave him my Instagram, and I knew like if I've given him my Instagram account, mm. he's gonna know everything about what I'm about, mm. right? He's gonna know this guy's religious. This guy does like this, what we're doing mm. right now. Maybe he'll watch it, and maybe you know he'll, you know, s- see what Islam is about, kind mm. of thing, right? So I gave it to him and he follows me and he likes my stuff and he and he, and he, and he checks it out and stuff which is a good thing yeah. right and that's kind of my way of telling him and that can be my way of telling him mm. or giving of giving him dawah right yeah. and after that like he's had conversations with me he's followed other people that I uh, like another mm. person that I who's in the dawah who I'm in touch with right and whatnot mm. and this person is now going to get exposed to Islam and what Islam is about and and then it sets me up to speak to him in of a nice way, yeah. Where whereas uh, you don't need to make it awkward where you're in university because I know how it is. When yeah. you're in university, you don't want to look like that weirdo. You don't mm. want to feel out of place, right? Yeah, Everyone's yeah, yeah. talking about. You don't want to feel out of place. Everyone you don't want to. Everyone wants to blend to a point. You want to blend in, yeah, to right? Point, yeah. uh, human beings in general, yeah. we want to blend in. Yeah, uh, that's how we are. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and 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 we want to be in a society, and that uh, but Islam encompasses that, right? Where Islam tells you to spend time with people yeah. who are good people, yeah. right? Blend in with those people. Don't blend in with the bad people. So when you're in uni, you want to blend in. Mm. However, one of the things that I've seen is. You can blend in, but also in a subtle way, let people know what mm. you're about. Get to know people first. Once you know people, exactly, yeah. Once you know people and you're in a group and whatnot, um, I'll give you an example. Like sometimes in university, you may be put into peer groups. We yeah. have to work with each other, and there's maybe some girls in there. Yeah, there's some girl in that group, right? Yeah. And you're working with the, the, those females, etc. Obviously, you're keeping your distances as a Muslim. Mm. But let's say they say, and it happens, mm. it definitely happens. Oh, guys, you want to go down to like um, the pub or like mm. for a drink afterwards and whatnot? They do that st- sort of stuff. Mm. Uh, or do you want to go to? A, do you want to go out on a night mm. out or whatnot? Let's. Why don't we all do it? That's like a perfect opportunity to let them know. Oh, I don't do that stuff, right? Mm. Well, well, why? Why don't you do that stuff? I'm a Muslim, right? And 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 to be honest with you, um, Islam Islam lets us know that that stuff is not good for you. It's not mm. good for your soul. Mm. It affects your soul, and you and you can make it even humorous. You guys try it. You guys tell me. Right, mm. if 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 it's good yeah. for your soul or not, yeah. right, and they're gonna know deep down, and even if they don't know right now, as they keep doing it, yeah. they're gonna remember what you said one day, yeah. And right, and I was told this isn't good for, and maybe that's that feeling that I'm feeling right of emptiness. But you know? I can tell you from experience, mate. Yeah, I've please. been there. I've I've done that. I've, yeah. I've lived that. You know, I'm, yeah. I'm not gonna say I was like, but I've 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 done the drinking and the and the recreational drug taking. I've done it. I've done all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and, and I was like I said, I, I was I was never happy doing it. Not only just me, I well, that's you, bro. Yeah, but about everyone around me, from that generation and all the way through, then none of them were happy. I wanted to just forgot to t- press on another touch on another little point. There is a a thing from the Muslim community, from the black and the brown brothers, okay? We all black and brown or something, if you ain't white, you <laughs> okay, is that white people are evil. You know, there's that type of the white devil type of the white devil type of thing, okay? <laughs> no, <laughs> there is that thing that, the, you know, the white man has done so much evil on the planet, then the white man is, is there any some black uh, groups uh, that, that would pr- propagate the same thing? So yeah. like the, the new, the original Hebrews or whatever they're called. Nation of Islam as well. Well, the Nation of Islam and groups like that, they would yeah. they would promote that, that white people are devils and that. Yeah, yeah. That don't help either, to be honest. You know, <laughs> if you're calling us devils, you call white people <laughs> devils, it instantly makes them a bit like, ooh, right then. You know, they don't like us, you know, because, that, that, and we're not. I mean, if, look, if someone called me a devil, I say, well, obviously I'm more powerful than you. Then I'm assuming the devil's more powerful. You're giving me power that you ain't got. You know, we do devilish things. Hmm. Doesn't mean we're devils. I mean, you, you, a lot of the things that white people have done in history has been horrific and devilish. Doesn't make every white. But there's many m- white people want to know about this religion. I promise you, I know them better than you. I can sense their moods better than you. I sense their body language mm-hmm. better than you do. They want to know. They're interested. They're just shy to know. 
then someone needs to tell them that you know what i mean mm -hmm. they want to it's there okay you'll see it if they come if they start coming they'll come in fast yeah but they need to you know they're shy okay so we they, they definitely want to know i'm going to wrap it up yeah we'll wrap it up inshallah but jazakallah khairan bro for coming on the show no it's my pleasure i mean bro. it's been it's been amazing having you yeah anytime and, man. and your insight has been definitely uh refreshing and definitely yeah. um an eye-opener okay i'm sure that a lot of the muslims watching at home um and even some non-muslims mm. will feel refreshed to hear your words because we don't always hear a perspective like yours, right? Mm. Where, where you're on the building site and mm. you, you you mentioned some of the incidents you've had, like yeah. of that and stuff. We don't hear that perspective. But one guy on the building site, a, a, spa, a, a electrician, he knows it's Ramadan because his his Pakistani neighbours bringing food round. Wow, curry. So he says, yeah, I like Ramadan. Yeah. You know I mean? yeah. <laughs> Chuck them a curry, bro. They love it. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the, the, the love all that. It's it's it's, it's, it's community techniques. building. Yeah, little things like that help in it. Inside techniques. So, yeah. yeah, but but this perspective has been really really good. So Jazakallah khairan no for worries, that. Anytime. And we leave it there, inshallah. Inshallah, cool. we look forward to speaking to you in the future as well. Getting your insight again. Yeah, anytime. Inshallah. Just give me. A, you got my WhatsApp. You can text me or call me anytime. Definitely. I'm around, inshallah. Bro, May Allah you know bless I mean? you, bro. And brothers and sisters, on that note, that has been rerouted. Uh, I'm not sure which episode we're on right now. Do forgive me for that, but make sure you you listen to us on the major podcast platforms. We're on uh, Apple Podcasts. You know that's the good. Use an iPhone, right? Yes, that's good. I'm a builder, not stupid. <laughs> Come on, guys. See what I'm saying? I never, I never said it, right? I could read also, as well. You know, for the people that are still, you know, finding themselves, um, Google Podcasts, Spotify, SoundCloud, check us out, inshallah, and make sure you subscribe down below. Take care of yourselves. We'll see you on the next one. Assalamualaikum. Peace. Dum 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 bounce